It's the giveaway. It's the giveaway. <laughs> so first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for everybody for liking and subscribing and commenting um, on these videos because that's ultimately what keeps this channel going. We're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as this company goes. And so we're gonna give away something even bigger this time. It's time to give away a PSC bow. All you guys have to do to win this thing is the same thing that you've been doing. Like and subscribe to our channel, like every video and comment. And you can comment as many times as you want. And when we go through and we pick, the more comments that you have or the more likes that you have along with being subscribed to this channel only improves your odds of winning this bow. We are literally giving someone a free bow, okay? Just to like and subscribe this video. So if you guys are interested in free stuff, um, and you didn't win this bow this time around, you didn't win these Vortex Finals, you're still entered. Just stay engaged with the channel, keep liking the videos, keep commenting on them, and it's, it's gonna help you win um, maybe trail cameras in the future, tree stands, things like that. So, people are always looking for a way to get ahead in the whitetail woods. How do you grow bigger deer than your neighbors? How do you hold more deer than your neighbors? How do you just get the biggest bucks on the block? Let's face it, social media is a place where you go and you see all these giant deer and you're, you can't help but to think about your situation and be like, why don't I have that many big deer on my property? What can I do to get bigger deer on your property? Well, let's be honest guys, the list of things that you can do to get bigger deer um, who spend more time on your property or just deer in general who do spend time on your property to grow larger, there are a couple things that you can do and one thing in general that I definitely recommend doing. Now, as, as habitat managers, as stewards of the land, as hunters, as property owners, we always think about what can we do for the deer in season. So what do we do? We plant food plots. Uh, we do timber stand improvement. We do things like that. And those will be beneficial to a certain extent to growing bigger deer, I guess you could say. But in order to grow bigger deer, we really need to focus on the growing season. And in fact, even all the way back before the growing season. So let's take it all the way back. Let's, let's, let's say we're sitting in the summer time frame, and let's rewind back to which growing season, let's call that summer. Let's, let's take it back to prior to that even, it's in the spring. Let's go back a step further, let's say the prior November. Let's talk about that for a second. During that prior November, what happens every year? A rut, okay? Now let's get down into the details a little bit more. During that rut, these bucks, these does, are run ragged, okay? They can lose up to 30% of their body mass, 30% of their body weight. What does that generally mean? It means that they're gonna be unhealthy at some point, especially when they reach a hard winter or come to a hard winter where they have to ultimately replenish themselves. And here's the thing, if they can't replenish themselves, everything slows down from a body growth standpoint. Um, everything slows down from an antler production standpoint. If the deer are not healthy, then they cannot grow. So what do we have to do? So like I said, that rut time period is really a problem, um, a problem time period for most people for most deer because they're, they're, you know, they're running nonstop and they're traveling miles and miles and miles. It's breeding season, they, that's their interest. So after that time, we really need to focus as, as stewards of the land, as whitetail hunters, as, as habitat um, experts, whatever you wanna call yourself, we need to focus on replenishing the deer herd. So what can you do? Well, as soon as that rut ends and we get into that off season time period, something that I love to recommend to clients where legal is supplemental feeding, okay? Supplemental feeding with a high protein food source at that not carbohydrates, not corn, guys. Um, what happens is the deer's digestive tract and uh, I guess their meta metabolism slows down to a certain extent late in the season and they can only process so many, so much of so many types of, of, of certain types of food. Um, carbohydrates can be detrimental to their health, especially in places where they feel the need to gorge themselves to death and die of something called rumen acidosis. We've talked about this in other videos. It can be detrimental to deer um, in your deer herd. But let's say you are looking to grow those bigger racks, guys. Go ahead and pick yourself up some high protein, a high protein food, food Food source something with about um, a total protein content of around 20 percent um, fat in the six to seven percent range um, and what we're going to do is we're going to feed these deer in the off season when they need it the most now think about it from a bodybuilder or, or a, a, an olympian standpoint we just got the olympics so it comes to mind but if you're training super hard and you're training super hard and you and you never refill your tank, you never have the protein, you never have the calories, well then how can you expect to make gains? Okay, how can you expect to grow bigger, stronger, be faster, be better at your event? This is the same thing in the whitetail woods, guys. In reality, if these deer don't have a dominant, predominant 
um, food source that they can go to and replenish themselves after the rut. And then we get into January, February. Now we got a long winter, we get bad storms we're with less than ideal conditions. And these deer aren't, you know, they, they don't have a place to go. They have nothing more than some woody browse. And let's say you didn't even do timber stand improvement on your property. Now there's little to no woody browse. There's little to no natural vegetation for them to be feeding on later in the year. Well, then how are they gonna thrive? They're not, they're going to be diminished. Um, and they're, they're, it's gonna take much longer for them to replenish their body. And the sooner that they can replenish um, and get back to that ideal body weight, the sooner that the antler production can take over and ultimately more, more of those vitamins and nutrients can go towards the bone growth on top of their head um, and ultimately grow bigger racks. So here's the thing, guys. If you have poor habitat um, and you're looking for a quick fix, I'm not saying it's uh, it's 100% gonna solve all your issues, but if you're trying to get bigger deer, guys, just think about it this way. You always have to be feeding. You always have to have a great food source. If you only work out, let's say, let's say you're working out 12 months out of the year, but you're only taking a protein shake or meeting the calorie requirement, requ requirement that you need for nine months out of the year, well, then you're not gonna hit full potential. So if we can give these deer a great food source throughout the entire year, um, that's a quality food source, not dumping down piles of corn, throwing down hay for them. There's better options, guys. High protein food sources if we can do that then the chances are that they're going to be healthier and their testosterone is going to stay risen longer throughout the throughout the off season and ultimately it's going to start boosting back up faster and they're going to put on more body weight and once they do that then the antler production can re reoccur and ultimately if the deer are just more healthy they're going to grow healthier racks and now don't get me wrong i don't think we're going to be able to be turn 125 inch five-year-olds into 220 inch six-year-olds um, but at the same time there's absolutely going to be benefits from a health standpoint and from a from a standpoint of growing antlers and better antler production in your area like i said you can't change genetics guys but you can maximize what you can you know the, the potential of those genetics there's always a maximum potential for any genetic um, and it's just a matter of whether you can help reach that. So by supplemental feeding in the off season, after post rut, um, and, and really through those hard times of the winter with the correct food source, I can't stress that enough because you could be doing harm guys if you're not. If we put the food so the right food source down during that off season, ultimately these deer gonna grow back bigger and stronger. And hey, who knows guys, maybe you shoot yourself a big old booner because of it. So at the end of the day, make sure that you're getting food down where legal, get the right food down, and, uh, and hopefully this means a lot bigger bucks for you and more success in your future seasons as well.